Hey everyone, Symphony Future here, and today I want to take a little look at a ducking trick in Reaper. Now in theory you can do this in any draw you want, but I'm going to demonstrate this in Reaper because it has a few nice little tools that make this a lot easier to do. So that's basically what we're going to do, and it sounds a little bit like uh, this. Who are you to say that you still want me when it was you who said goodbye? Who are you to ask me for a chance when you're the only reason why? It's over and it's all your fault, it's done now. So essentially it is ducking the reverb uh, or any effect you want to put into this chain while the vocals are going or whatever uh, you want to apply this to is making sound. Uh, these vocals, by the way, are from Ghost Hack, from a free pack they gave out. A uh, great company. If you need samples, definitely check them out. Um, but we are going to focus on this little chain. So what I have right here is one track at the top, which is my reverb track. So on this track, you will find my black hole. And I've used black hole because it doesn't have an internal ducker. So it seemed like a good choice to demonstrate this with, and it's also very extreme, so you can easily hear the tails. Then why? Which makes it pretty good for demonstration purposes. I wouldn't recommend it for vocals per se, to, at least not in this setup, because it's very big. Uh, but whatever, it's a, it's a demonstration. So we have Black Hole here, and we have this uh, plugin called uh, M Utility by Melda. This is from their free bundle, and I would also recommend checking that out. Uh, it's a free bundle with a bunch of very useful plugins. And uh, the only thing you have is a little banner in the bottom uh, telling you that you can pay for it, but you can pretty much ignore it, and it works great. So that's my reverb track, and we have a vocal track, and on here there is absolutely nothing right now. Because these vocals are already good uh, as they are. You might need uh, compression, pitch correction, whatever you want on this track. So how do we route this thing? Uh, for that we can use the handy dandy little built-in track wiring view. So we have our master track, our verb track, and our vocal track. Now I made two routings. The first routing is to the one and two, which goes through the black hole, through the M utility, into the fader and into the master. That's basically the easiest routing. That's just dragging the routing from one to two and just leaving it at that. The second routing is to 3 and 4. And this is to bypass the black hole, because otherwise um, Reaper will use the reverbed uh, sound as the input trigger. And this might cause issues because it will actually duck the till because there is a till. So you definitely need to do this little step. For this you just drag the route to the route. And you select here 3 and 4. And if 3 and 4 are not there yet, you can easily just choose new channel. And there will be 3 and 4. And that's that. It's very easy to set up. Um, because that's all there is. <laughs> now you have two channels. One for your effects. In my case, the reverb. You can also put delay on there. I'll throw some delay in there and some other stuff. Just for demonstration sake. Uh, and that's your vocal track and you didn't change anything there. So what's the next step? The first step is making sure that this track is outputting a wet signal so we can mix it in. So the reverb is at 100% wet. And um, utility is pretty much base settings, just throw it in there and that's done. And then we actually go to the little trim button and in the little trim button, you can go to M Utility Volume, and you have the Mod button. And if you press this, it will open this window, and I will open a new one. So by default, it looks like this. It's just a little empty modulation window. And here you can click 
the audio control signal side chain. And that will turn it into the window you see down here. So I'm going to put this one away. Now this is where you control the uh, settings for the side chain. And the reason I chose this way is because you can't actually automate the volume knob. That was my initial plan was just use the volume. But as you can see, there is no mod for the volume. So you have to use a plugin with a volume control. Uh, you can essentially use any plugin you want. Uh, it's just that the uh, M utility is a very light plugin to run. And it's pretty perfect for just doing this. So that's why I chose it. And this is how you set it up. So you enable the parameter modulation baseline value. This allows you to turn the volume up and down from here. You can see the knob moving along. You then set the side chain to channel three and four. So that's our raw focal without any uh, processing by this chain. And from that point on, you'll have to play around with the settings a little bit uh, because you have to make sure the attack and release match your uh, clip. This setting I have here works fairly well, although in these shorter bursts. Who are you to ask me for a chance when you're the only reason why? It can get a little bit muddy, but it's not too bad. So you basically have to set your attack, uh, which determines uh, how fast it recognizes the signal level. Your release determines how fast uh, basically it refreshes. Um, min and max focal determines the range within uh, in which it works. And you can also set strength, which determines how much the volume is altered. And I set it to negative, so you can see every time who are you to ask me? It ducks the volume down. That's what we want. We want to duck. You can also uh, boost. Who are you to ask me for a chance when you're the only reason why? Which pretty much inverses the effect. But for ducking, you want to have a negative, And you can play around with the strength to determine how much the ducking uh, will take place. If we disable this. Who are you to ask me for a chance when you're the only reason why? It's over and it's all your fault. It's done now, yeah, I let it go. I moved on and I think that you should know. I think that you should know. Who are you to ask me for a chance when you're the only reason why? It's over and it's all your fault. It's done now. Who are you to ask me for a chance when you're the only reason why? And this is a neat little way to uh prevent things from getting cluttered. I don't use it too much personally, but I know a lot of producers like to use this on vocals, especially with delay, um, to minimize the amount of delay that gets in the way of the vocals, because having uh, words overlap can really mess with your brain and make things very hard to understand. So let's just quickly change the flow of this a little bit by throwing in a delay, just to show that it can uh, work with anything. Uh, what delay do we have? Actually, let's just do Sandman. Because Sandman is always good. So we put it in front of the M utility. Disable uh, our reverb for the time being. Try a little bit, oh, a little bit of feedback. Who are you to ask me for a chance when you're the only reason why? It's over and it's all your fault. It's done now, yeah, I let it go. I moved on and I think that you should know. I think that you should know.
I think it's time you know oh, that I let you go. So this is a pretty simple little trick you can apply. Uh, I'm using volume automation here uh, because that's sort of the more natural way to do it. You can also do this with a compressor, which I will show in a different video because there's a different process for that. So here's a little little uh, Reaper trick you can possibly apply to your stuff. And if you have any questions, just drop them down below and I'll try to answer them. So that's it for now and uh, see you around.